Chances are you think that I'm in love with you. I'm Elliot Forrest, in for Leonard Lopate. You know John Waters as the creator of the cult movies Hairspray, Pink Flamingos, Polyester, and Female Trouble. He's also an actor, an artist, and a writer. His latest book, Role Models, is a collection of essays on people he has known and admired, who include the singer Johnny Mathis, who we hear, the Baltimore stripper Lady Zorro, and the former Charles Manson follower Leslie Van Houten, among others. It's published by Farrar, Strauss, and Giroux, and it's a pleasure to welcome John Waters. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Nice introduction of hearing Johnny Mathis. I think he's getting royalties, even. Uh, we'll send him a few <laughs> dollars. You start the book with, with Johnny Mathis. I, I, you know, i got to say, it seems like, at first blush, a very odd choice. And I I wasn't sure whether he was a real role model or you're kind of poking fun no, at us. No, there's no irony in this book. I don't poke fun at anybody, I think. Um, uh, Johnny Mathis is the opposite of me in many ways. And I think sometimes we're attracted to the opposite. We're interested in the opposite. He has mass across the board, middle America uh, success, something I'll probably never have. He doesn't try to be famous at all. You never see Johnny Mathis at any events. He doesn't go on book tours. He doesn't do your show, right? Uh, he doesn't do anybody's show. Yet everywhere is sold out when he performs still. He's beyond show business. He never had racial uh, hatred ever, even when he was young, he told me. He's beyond race. He's beyond fame. And he still can sing wonderfully. Was it difficult to bag the interview? Kind of, because I think he was very suspicious. I would be, too, if I was Johnny Mathis and he and John Waters called him up. Uh, and the lawyer was there. He was nice, though. But I, I asked him if he had Googled me. He said, well, yeah. And uh, so, But Johnny Mathis was a great gentleman and very, very nice. And, um, and I had a good time with him. And we're still very, very different. I don't know that Johnny Mathis, to be honest, I don't even know if he knows who I am. I, I think his assistant later told me he thought the book was funny, and at least his chapter. I don't know about the rest of the book. So what makes Johnny Mathis a role model for you? Because he's effortless. He never tries too hard. He, he doesn't, he's never embarrassing about wanting to be a celebrity. He, he, he doesn't have to try, yet he's massively uh, successful. And are, are you alike in any ways? Well, we're both single men. We live alone, as far as I know. We're in showbiz. We constantly tour. Um, and I always say that we both have a Christmas show. I have the John Waters Christmas. He has the Johnny Mathis Christmas. That we should switch audiences one day. <laughs> and I'd come out and sing Chances Are, and he would come out and talk about the erotic attraction of Santa Claus to Chubby Chasers. And imagine <laughs> our opposite audience's horror at, at each other's acts. And then we could go backstage and giggle about it. I've, I've never seen your Christmas show, but I definitely want to see it now. <laughs> you were surprised a little bit about Mathis's politics. Well, I'm not so surprised. My assistant's a Republican, and people are always really shocked to hear that. I mean, she was nude in my last movie, Friendly Nude, and did a great job. She's a good actress. Uh, Tab Hunter's a Republican. He, um, he told me that, that he was for Reagan the day we filmed the scene in Polyester where he's kissing Divine. You never know what people's real politics are. Um, I'm a bleeding-heart liberal. But I do think that if we want to change anybody's mind, we get them to laugh. That's the first way they'll listen. Uh, you say you can't decide whether watching Johnny Mathis perform is perfect or torture. What did you mean by that? Well, because it is, this was a Christmas show, so there was no irony, believe me. I mean, the stage looked like a Hallmark greeting card. The audience was filled with many women in, in jogging suits with Christmas corsages. But yet, I liked Johnny Mathis just as much as they did when he sang. And he did a beautiful show. He, they don't even, he's so famous, they don't even introduce him. The band's playing, and then he just sort of walks on stage and starts singing so effortlessly. You know? And, and um, he always told me he wanted to be a jazz singer. He didn't want to. He was embarrassed by singing religi um, romantic songs. He felt trivialized by it. So you never know what people, what they want to be and what their, what their image ends up being. Um, you uh, write about the fashion designer, and m make sure I pronounce this correctly, Ray Kawakubo. Yep, that's right. Uh, who ma they ma she um, makes clothes. Uh, that Come to Garçon is the fashion line. that she, she It's her line. And I think the quote is that uh, they're torn, crooked, permanently wrinkled, ill-fitting, and expensive. Well, yeah, to me it's like uh, when you're young, you should, you should go buy clothes that are torn and ripped and permanently wrinkled in a thrift shop, and they're a nickel. But over 40 years old, you need all the help you can get. And uh, certainly she, I believe, is an artist who, who took, uh, designed a line that basically is based on not following the directions in your dry cleaning instructions, <laughs> doing everything the opposite of what you're supposed to do to clothes. And I find it witty. I find it a secret way 
to spend money on fashion because when I wear the clothes out in Baltimore blue collar bars, people say to me, that's a shame about that coat. Can't you afford anything better than that? So it's wearing fashion in secret, which I find kind of delightful. Anything in your ensemble today from uh, Well, from I do Ray? have a come to go so coat on. It looks normal from the outside, but you turn it in, it looks like the inside of a coffin inside. With it's, a, it's a black yeah. coat with piping on it yeah. and uh, purple lining on the inside. Yeah. So it's secret. That's if you want to be undercover. And uh, what makes it art? Why is she an artist? It's art to me because she takes what you believe what Filene's basement used to call seconds, where things were wrong, one sleeve didn't come out right, or something was torn, or and then she charges more for it, which to me is art. It's taking a mistake and making it even better than what a benefit turned out. Sometimes she just rips the collar off. Sometimes she throws stains on it. She, uh, One coat I have looks like uh, a dirty bath mat. I mean, they're kind of dare you to wear these clothes. So I, I find them funny, and I think wit and fashion is art. And how expensive are we talking about? Oh, I never talk about money. <laughs> well, we'll have to find it. I mean, if I wanted to go buy it. You can call her up and ask. All me. right, we'll have to take a look. Um, let's talk about Cy Twombly. Yep. Uh, your taste in art, modern, postmodern? How do you describe it? Well, I like it? contemporary art. Cy Twombly is 80 years old, and I, I still think he's the most cutting-edge artist there is. He's been around since the 50s. I think his work uh, is incredibly beautiful and confident, but it makes people that don't care for modern art really angry because they say, my kid could do this, and I feel like saying, well, they should have, stupid. It just sold for $10 million. But it's not about money, but his work, I think, is incredibly beautiful. But it's not easy to see correctly, and I think all modern art, you have to learn how to see. You have to put down your contempt before investigation and, and learn to see in a different way. I'm not for art for the people. People. I think that's a terrible idea. I like the elitism of the art world. I and, think it's funny. And, I like impenetrable art writing. And you own? I own prints. I can't afford it. Are you kidding? The paintings are millions of dollars. You know? oh, okay. But um, I, I do own prints, and I, I'm a big fan of his. I, I go to every show. I have every book on him. I, I think he's an incredibly uh, uh, the best, best artist of all today that's living. Well, I, I collect Fishley Weiss, who are my favorite Swiss uh, contemporary art uh, artists, and, and they do um, purposely mediocre photographs that look like they'd be the second discount thrown out of a calendar for an airline. Um, <laughs> and, and I always say that you can't have the best of a Fishley Weiss show because there, there's no best. You can't have a worse either or a best when they purposely do things that are unremarkable and I think very droll. Um, modern art's supposed to make you angry, I think. It's supposed to change things. Everything's been wrecked. It's, there's no new way to do it except to be purposely second-rate, which Fishley Weiss it are, with a little bit of a giggle. I mean, they, they photograph things so they don't especially turn out so you can't see them. Um, they do everything in reverse, kind of, but still with a twinkle in their eye. And, and um, can, can playing practical jokes be art? I think theirs is. Uh, uh, I could be wrong, but this is my own imagination, that your home looks like some of the sets of, of your films. Am I far off? You'd be far off. Um, I have antiques, oriental rugs, and contemporary art. No, I don't have uh, leopard skin rugs and uh, 50s modern, which is probably what you imagine. Uh, in your essay, you say the job of contemporary art is to infuriate. You just said this yeah, as I well, believe that. To, yeah. ma to make people mad. Why, why do you think that is? Well, because uh, the old art up to the... You know, the old masters was about looking beautiful and pretty. Looking beautiful and pretty is the worst thing you can do in contemporary art. So they had to start over. They had to wreck each thing and, and go back and begin again. So everything's been wrecked 40 different times. So you have to think not only trying to wreck now is trying too hard. So you have to think of another way to surprise people. And that's what I think contemporary art's job is, is to surprise you. The art I like the best when I first see it makes me angry, and then I love it. And uh, Ileana Sutherman said the same thing. They said, "Why did you? How did you build this incredible collection of contemporary art?" And she said, "I just always bought what I didn't like, which was <laughs> the first thing that made you angry." And think about it. Think what abstract expressionism changed everything. Pop art changed everything. And at first, people hated it.